we're ready to start interacting with the surface. We've done a, uh, a touch test and we've done two dig and dump tests. And this is where it's absolutely uh, making me so happy. As, let, let, me, let me show you the first picture. And this is after the second dump, uh, dig and dump that is. And if you look at the right hand side of the picture just above the shadow, you see where we've made two digging operations. This is only a scoop, a dump, a scoop, and a dump. That's it. That's all that's been done there. And yet, you see some whitish material in the upper uh, area where the scoop has interacted with the surface. Now, for the science team, we've had an impassioned discussion about whether that might be more likely to be salts or perhaps ice or even some other materials that are more exotic. But uh, I think salts and ice are probably the leading contenders here. And it's very difficult to tell which just because it's white. This graphic uh, has three locations. And we're going to be picking up three samples as uh, we progress through uh, uh, the first cycle of sampling and uh, delivering samples to the instruments. You see at the left uh, location is called Baby Bear. Mama Bear and Papa Bear. Baby Bear will be the first sample collected. It's right next to that trench that we've just dug. And uh, it'll be delivered to the Tiga instrument. The terrain that is the work area of the arm and, and overlaid on that terrain is a pink area. And that's actually where the arm can access for digging. And then uh, the outside of that pink area is a green area. And that is reserved for the placement of an instrument on the arm called the TECP. And then off to the left side is a blue area, and that's um, essentially reserved for dumping. That's where the soil will be piled up uh, after we dig it out of the hole. And this is, again, that, um, that terrain that has now had a color uh, coating put on top of it that represents the elevations. So uh, blue is the deepest elevation area and red is the highest elevation area and to give you an idea of just how much elevation difference there is across the work area of the arm the difference between blue and red in that scale is 15 about 15 inches so from the deepest to the highest area is roughly 15 inches and we can put that graphic back up um, so on the graphic it shows where our first scoop occurred it's far to the left side of that um, area. And then we have a dotted line surrounding the work area of the arm. Um, and the next sample, the sample that's being acquired today, is immediately to the right of the first scoop. And that sample will be acquired from the surface. And that was actually pre-planned from the time we uh, originally proposed this mission. The very first sample is going to be a surface sample. Um, and that sample will go into the TIGA instrument, and then a sample immediately to the right of that will be acquired and will go into the MECA instrument. And once we have those samples, then we plan to go back to that place where we have the first scoop where we've revealed the white layer and start uh, digging down into that layer to understand what we've got there and to better characterize what is the depth of the ice, what is the, where is the position of the white layer? How thick is it? Does it go all the way to the depth of the ice table, or is it a thin layer? Um, and then finally, once we have a better understanding of the um, depth distribution, then we will decide how we're going to use the rest of our work area to get the remaining samples. So we only kind of have a, a limited number of samples and a limited, limited number of tries at this, so we want to plan it very carefully. It shows in the center a cavity, and in the meantime, I can talk about this. We have a stereo imaging, and so we know about uh, the structures we see. You see in the center a, a cavity, and this cavity extends uh, so uh, to the gravel on the right hand side where you see a little pebble and this seems to be the scene could be that this pebble has been um, thrown out by the thrusters uh, during the landing activity and rolled down through the cavity. You can also see in the um, uh, snow queen on this uh, smooth surface on the roundish uh, surface a, characterized, uh, a characteristic ledge which indicates a, a layering of uh, this uh, material 
the ledges may be in the order of a centimeter high and uh, small pits can be seen uh, along this ledge and uh, this is a material uh, which is uh, considerably brighter than the environment than the uh, regulus you see in the vicinity and of course uh, we were, became very excited uh, to see this kind of uh, material and the next uh, image uh, shows uh, or video animation shows you the activity of uh, the arm uh, doing some duties on top of uh, the lander going to the uh, um, optical microscope and then to TIGA and uh, then it, uh, after it has done uh, some pseudo deliveries if you want to into those uh, instruments it uh, shows the activity looking underneath uh, the lander. It's sort of like a giraffe looking between its legs. It's a complicated activity, and it's a complicated activity also for the uh, robotic arm. And uh, holy cow, <laughs> what did we see there? It was, we were all amazed, and we, we saw the flat surface, a bright surface, and uh, which is shown in detail in this uh, uh, slide. You can see the, uh, the, that the lander stands essentially on an extended hard surface, which is about three times brighter than the vicinity of the, uh, of the regulus. And you can see that the surface has been blown clear by the thrusters in the middle between the two thrusters at the legs, in the southern leg and the rear, and the uh, easterly leg in the front, there's a ridge of material blown together by the thrusters and the surface is rather smooth and extended. And this, I think, makes us thinking that this is the typical surface we are standing on. I think there's the, it's, it's probably extending underneath the regulus, underneath about maybe five centimeters of regulus and we could expect to see this while we are digging. And we will see uh, the this is one activity of the rack of the robotic arm camera is to look at the details during operation at the end of the arm. We can look at areas uh, the SSI can't look and we can look at the details of the uh, lander deck and we also, of course, at the details where we do the digging. And we can look at the material we are digging out as seen in the next image, the uh, material uh, uh, in the scoop. Uh, on Sol 9 on the last day, day the, from the second dig of the Dodo area and this time you don't see any whitish material uh, shown in this uh, uh, in the back of the scoop the camera can resolve the details of the material in here uh, uh, the resolution of this uh, middle image is about half a millimeter uh, per pixel and when the uh, material comes closer to the blade of the, the scoop, then we can uh, analyze the material in detail down to the uh, fraction of this uh, thickness of a, uh, ma uh, of, a, of a man's hair. This is one uh, topic to do, is to characterize the material before it's delivered, but on the other hand, we can also characterize the digging area, as shown uh, uh, already and shown again in the next uh, slide where we look down on the trench, which we, uh, uh, the extended trench after the second digging, and the perspective is uh, optimum because we almost look perpendicular to the, uh, down on the surface. There is no uh, uh, distortion uh, due to the uh, uh, geometry, and you can see here in, that we indeed, for the first time, we saw in the digging area the white material at the, at the bottom. You have to think about that the, uh, the second time when we went into the uh, uh, trench, the uh, bl blade scraped essentially a across the bottom of uh, the trench, and while it did this, it uh, showed, it opened some white material uh, to our view, and I think uh, this is prob very probably the same kind of material, the same surface we have seen extensively underneath the spacecraft itself. So it's just corroborating the idea that we, uh, this uh, solid material uh, uh, extends all over, all under the regulus 
seen in the vicinity of Zelanda.